Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to go through the steps through which you can customize your tray icon for your AutoHockey script as well as the right click menu for the tray icon. So if you're interested in this topic, please continue watching. All right, welcome back. Let's get started. Uh, because this script that you see right here, which has a lot of customized options for the tray icon, has a few lines as you can see down here. So these are the labels that go with the tray menu items you see up here. I'm going to create a new window for the Visual Studio Code and open up the same script and have it on the right hand side and this one on the left hand side. And for the one on the right hand side, I'm going to scroll down to where the labels are and for the one on the left hand side, I will keep it at where the tray icon menus are created or menu items are created so I can refer to the labels as I uh, go through these line by line. So um, the way you can create a menu item for the tray icon or customize it is you go use the menu command and then followed by tray and that will refer to the tray icon menu options. All right, so that's the basics of it. And then you follow that by uh, sub commands that varies from tip, icon, add, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so beginning with the first one, what the first one basically does is it will customize your tooltip. So tooltip is this thing here when you hover your mouse cursor on top of your tray icon. I'm seeing a tooltip that says this is my customized tray icon. Normally for non-customized ones, you see your Otoaki script name, right? But you can customize that by going tray tip and your customized text. Next up is tray icon. So the sub command icon will convert your tray icon from a default Otoaki tray icon like this one with the green background and the white H letter to something of your choice which is done by referring to a ICO file in order for you to create an ICO file. You can go to a website like this one right here and upload a PNG or JPEG image file, which then gets converted that you can download into an ICO file and refer to it. So here is my ICO file that has been converted from a PNG image. If it's going to open it, there we go. So that's used to be this used to be a PNG file and it's been converted into ICO. When I point to it, it will be converted. The tray icon will be converted to a different one. So you can also point to an executable file like chrome.exe. If I go ahead and rerun this, then my icon will have changed to a Chrome icon. So let me just go back to my original one. Okay, so that's uh, how to how you edit the appearance of your tray icon. Moving on to the tray menu items. So first up is we have this click one. I'll explain this in a bit. No standard basically removes the standard menu items. The so standard menu items are like the ones that you see here. When you perform a right click on any default auto hockey tray icon, then you're going to get this open health window spy, blah, 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 exit options. So if you go menu tray, no standard, then you're going to remove the standard menu items and then you're going to start anew and then follow that by your first tray menu item just put an add for the sub command and then the name of your menu item i've called it display message box followed by a label this label my label is right here and it just displays a message box that says hi so if i go ahead and do a right click on my customized tray icon and then click the display message box menu item and it's going to display the message box and run that label now you may have noticed that my first item display message box menu item has been bolded and that's because this is made default and that's what the next line does so if you go menu tray default display message box which matches this one right here then this menu item is going to be made default and therefore it's going to be bolded as well as when you perform a left click on the tray icon 
if I perform a left click on this thing, then it's going to run the label that is attached. That is a sorry about this. It's my schedule script running. Um, that is attached to the uh, to, to the default tray menu item. So number one here refers to the number of clicks. You can do it up to number two, which makes it double click. So you've got to double click on your tray icon in order to launch that uh, message box. And you can only do up to number two. So it's either a single click or a double click. So that's something useful if you want to quickly launch something by clicking into the tray icon in your tray. Um, and then what we have afterwards is what's called a test toggle enable. This is the name of my second uh, tray menu item. And as you can see, I don't have any reference to any label afterwards. And that's by design because when I just stop it here, that means I'm going to create a label that matches the name of this tray menu item. And that is right here. So this menu command tray toggle enable basically enables or disables your menu item. So right now it's enabled. If I click that, then it's going to be grayed out. So if I go back to the tray menu, then it's grayed out and I can't click on it anymore. Okay, so that's what uh, what's what toggle enable does. And then test enable above is this one right here, menu tray enable. So this enables the menu item you specify after that. So if I do a right click on it and then click this one, it's going to enable the one above like that. And I'll see that it has been enabled again. Okay, next up is test toggle checks. This is a, a checkbox and you can see how I put in a ampersand sign here, the end sign, and this, this converts this into a short key. So C is going to be my short key. So let me just go right click on my tray icon. Unfortunately, you don't see uh, the underlining of the letter C for some reason, um, as opposed to when you create a menu instead of the customizing the tray menu. Um, but if you do press the short key, then it's going to toggle that. So you see a checkbox ticked right here. And then if I click this again, then it's going to toggle off. So the checkbox has gone away. That's a separator. So you can see how there's a bit of a, there's a very thin line here separating these two. Now, test default. What is test default? So test default makes uh, item default. So it's, it's just like this one but you can also remove the default status from the menu items by going menu tray no default as well. Now to this line, I've also added an icon. And so when I open up the tray menu, you can see there is an icon on the left hand side. And to refer to that icon, you simply uh, basically refer to your own ICO file or an executable file with a reference to the icon file within the executable file. And so what this does is test default will, if I click on it, make it default. So the default status has changed from display message box to test default. If I click on it again, then it's going to remove the default option. So the default option goes away and be it becomes un bolded. So unfortunately, there's no such thing as toggle default. And so I had to use an if else statement in order to toggle on and off the default status of my specified menu item. So I've got menu trade no default here. This basically removes the default status for all the menu items and assign a false value to the variable called default, right? So when the label runs, if the default variable as a value of true, then it's going to make everything no, not a default and then assign false value to the variable called default else. So when I, when it runs the first time, it will run the else statement because default will have nothing in it. Menu trade default and test default, which is the menu item that I've selected. And then it will assign the true value to the variable called default. And then the next time it will run, it will go into the if statement, meet the if statement and remove the default status for all the menu items. So that's what it does. So it's just like toggle on and off using an if else statement. 
test standard. Test standard is just like the no standard here, but you can also add the standard items by going menu tray standard. So right now I don't have any standard uh, menu items. So standard menu items being these ones here. So if I go ahead and click on the test standard menu item, then I'll see all these, uh, these ones down here. So it will be added to the bottom of the existing menu item. So open help window spy and up to exit as well. So if I click this test standard again, then it's going to, it's going to hide that. And the way it works is again, there's no toggle on and off standard. So I had to create a variable called standard and give it a value of either true or false in order to switch it on and off and add the standard and menu items or take away the standard menu items. I've also added the icon to this menu item, as you can see here, and this is the shell 32 DLL file and test delete means to delete the selected menu item. It's going to delete itself. So tray sub command delete will delete the menu item that matches the main that you specify after that. So if I go ahead and click this one, this will go away. So you've got the test delete item gone away and test delete all is basically going to delete all the menu items. So if I click that and it's going to delete everything and the label that you ran just now is menu tray delete all. So if I go back to my icon, do a right click on it, it's not going to show me any menu item. So I have to rerun this script in order to bring it all back up. There we go. So next up is test rename. Rename renames the menu item. And I made it so that it again works like a toggle. And uh, I've created variables to switch between uh, two different names. So right now I've got test rename as my menu item. If I click on it, then it's going to be changed to renamed. As you can see here, renamed. And if I click on it again, then it's going to go back to the original name. And the rename sub command is the sub command that does the renaming of the menu item. And test display item info. These are the variables that you can use in order to run maybe if statement or whatever you want to do based on what item you click. So if I go ahead and click on test display item info, then I'm going to see you selected test display item info, which is this a this menu item variable from the tray. So tray is going to be a underscore this menu. So tray is this value you see here. And this is in position number 11. So this thing is number 11 from the top. So these are some variables that you can utilize if you want to say perform different things based on the position of the menu item or the name of the menu item and so on and so forth. Now another separator here afterwards I've got child menu created which are given the my label label is just this one message box. So I've created two child menu items. So you can actually create and attach child menu to a parent menu, even within the tray icon as well. Okay. In this manner, you've just to give it a different name. So you've got to give the child menu a different name, such as this child menu right here, add the menu item, attach the label, or if you have a label that goes by the same name as the menu item name, then you don't have to attach a label. I've created exactly a replica of that. Just need to change the reference of the number to two. And then you, you do the usual attachment of your child menu to your parent menu. So you've got menu command tray and add sub command followed by parent menu. So this is a new menu item I'm going to create to add into my tray menu and have the child menu attached to it, in which case you're going to see like you saw before, the child menu attached to the parent menu. So when I hover my mouse on it, I'll be able to see the child menu items. So here is a way to change the color of your menu 
it's not that beautiful so it's going to change to yellow so I don't advise you use that but if you ever wanted to uh, switch the color to a different color then you can use this color sub command there are some more commands you might want to check out in the documentation for the menu command in order to customize your tray menu as well so here i've got a hotkey actually you can show this uh, tray menu anywhere it doesn't have to be from the tray itself so you can either right click on this thing or you can also uh, create a hotkey to go menu tray show just like you would show any other menu right so if i go numpad zero then it's going to show up the tray menu where your mouse cursor is in this manner okay i think that's it there's no more to show okay so this is it for today's video thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one